He was not begging God. God, please, God, I beg. Who is your boyfriend? <laughs> You're the love of my life. Don't you know? <laughs> I don't want to do. Because if you come and meet me to defend you, I'm going to make sure you end up in jail. In fact, I will tell the persecutor, please, dear. Life sentence. No, actually. Uh, what's the decoder team? When they, when they kill you legally. Death sentence. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Rosemary. I'm the Black Scrubbler. And yeah, so I was like, I've been giving these people a little bit of tip here, a little bit of tip there. But they don't really know me like that, you know? So I actually guys ask me questions. And yeah, some questions are very funny. I'm not even gonna lie. So let's uh, get into the video. You don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, see and subscribe when I post a new video on Mondays and Thursdays. Alright. So, what is your full name and is there a story behind it? My full name is Osuya Obielumani Rosemary Ogene Kome. Um, Obielumani means my heart is at peace, Ogene Kome means God's gift. The story behind it, yeah, there is a story behind it. Let me tell you people. So my daddy now came to this life. He now said, hey, nothing will make him not to have a girl child. Though. He was not begging God, God, please, God, I beg. God now said, fine, oh, no. yeah, take, bah, carry, get child, here you go. And he was like, my is at peace. But I'm sure some days he will be like, God, this is not exactly what I asked for, child, but stay in my gym. God said, no take backs. Where are you from? I'm from Delta State. I am a full-fledged Delta girl. My dad is Ukwani. He's from Abi, and my mom is Isoko from Ibeze. So, Delta babe here. Where do you live? I currently live in Paris, France. Uh, what do you do for a living? I am a photographer, a YouTuber, a videographer, a an Airbnb manager okay so yeah uh, all around I'm a creative I would like to say if you could go back in time with all you know now what would you do differently <sighs> if I could go back in time what would I do differently I think the one thing I would do differently is not to take things too seriously um, there are so many things that I hold on to and they shouldn't matter as much and i've given them power because of how seriously i took them and then also my life i think for a while there i took my life too seriously like i'm still learning to stop taking my life too serious because when you have it too tight of a grip on something you tend to suffocate it and squeeze it there's no room for it to bloom and you know spread out so yeah that's one thing i'm going to do differently and secondly i am going to be very very protective of my voice and how i choose to express myself you know growing up you when you are becoming yourself you begin to hear like different people's opinions on certain things and whether you like it or not what people say tend to affect you even at the very least on the subconscious level and so i'm going to learn to filter out people's voices so that their voice does not become my voice even if for a temporary moment so yeah i'm going to be very protective of my voice those are two things that i'll do differently well yeah who are your role models and why um i would say my parents even though that sounds so cliche but when i know that when push comes to shove my parents are going to be there for me um, they have taught me so many valuable lessons and they continue to teach me their lives are inspirational even at their old age they are still striving for knowledge and understanding they listen to us the children try to get our opinions on things they want to see us prosper and they do not force their ideology on us we have conversations so instead of my parents saying this is how you must go my parents would be like this is why i think you should go here 
what do you think and then i can say no i want to go this way and then they're like why do you want to go this way what do you think are the benefits of going this way and if you insist they will allow you go if it works for you they're happy for you if it doesn't work for you come back they'll say well so yeah try here now she is what i told you before you know so they really are just so interested in our growth and development as individuals as opposed to just seeing us as an extension of themselves so i really appreciate that and it's been interesting seeing them evolve as human beings from what i knew them or who i knew them to be as a child versus now but yeah my parents are awesome where do you see yourself in five to ten years time honestly five to ten years time i see myself um, being fulfilled and content with who i have become i do not want to talk about any career paths like oh i want to be a successful photographer or photographing for fancy <laughs> um in five to ten years time but irrespective of where i'm at i just want to be in a position where i can say you know what i'm proud of myself i am happy to be alive i am glad to wake up each day and uh, i love what i do those are basically the goals and where i see myself in the next five to ten years like i just want to be in all of my life basically <laughs> why do you like trouble in my life well let me see because your life is boring and you need me to spice it up what do you mean why do you like trouble in your life you know that if i've not troubled your life you'll come and look at me you say ah rosemary oh yeah you're what going on no it's been a while oh please help me help me i'm so bored anyway who is your boyfriend <laughs> is the way this babe say who is your boyfriend she never say do you have a boyfriend is who baby is you that's the love of my life don't you know <laughs> oh my god when will i see you this when will i see your question was particularly funny to me because I didn't need to go anywhere except to work. Or we'll see. We'll see very soon. Shortly. I know you miss me. What motivates you to keep going? <sighs> My younger brother. <laughs> so um one of my biggest achievements in life is to be the big sister that my younger brother is proud of. I really want him to be an amazing person and develop into this beautiful young man and I feel like it is part of my job as his elder sister to not only direct him and be there for him but also to be an amazing human being that he can feel comfortable coming to and he can be proud of and you know i just want to be someone that he can look up to and so when things get difficult i'm like is this how you want to be someone that this boy looks up to because this ain't cutting it sis and then i'm like yeah okay i need to shape up you know but yeah my younger brother is a motivating factor in life what's your favorite piece of jewelry i won't say i have a favorite piece of jewelry per se however this one well these two I wear every day I'll show you this one uh, this one and then this one um, this one my friend Vanessa was the original owner <laughs> but I took it and I was like yeah I'm not giving it back and I think I don't know actually I don't know where I got this one from I'm not even gonna lie but this one is the only piece of jewelry that had a previous owner and it just feels special to me but yeah anyway like it's the only piece of jewelry that has a story behind it that I own yeah maybe so let's leave it as my favorite and I, what is my favorite restaurant to eat at I don't have I don't go out to eat. Let's start there. That's the beginning of the problem. I don't go out to eat. So, I don't have a favorite restaurant. However, I've made it a goal. That before the end of this year, I need to find a favorite restaurant. So, when I do know, I'll let you know. 
um, how long have you been into photography? Technically, eight years. Realistically, three years. <laughs> so I say technically eight years because in 2015, that's when I picked up the camera for the first time, and uh, I've been playing around with it. And then, uh, realistically, actually, if you really think about it, considering pandemic, it really three years for 2021. You know, but let's leave that 2020. But yeah choose your choice um what was your worst experience studying pharmacy <sighs> i think the day that i have like so many ish stories while studying pharmacy but the day i felt like my heart broke was when i realized that the pharmaceutical industry is not in the business of they don't care about your health basically they just want to make money and that was not what made me go into it. I wanted to thank you to HIV. Okay? And then, yeah, yeah, tell you, Mikpe. <laughs> Hello, dear. You are your blame. You see that HIV? Forget about it. What were your fears when you switched from pharmacy to photography? My biggest fear was failure. I did not want to be tagged as the failure or disappointment of the family. I did not want to break my parents' hearts. Um, because I'm the only person in my house that enter university and I come outside and okay BSc. So uh yeah. To to be a failure, to be tagged the failure of the family. But you see God, God is good because right now nobody can come and failure. <laughs> but yeah, that was my biggest fear, honestly. Um and that I won't amount to anything because you know when we were growing up, the ideology was school is what makes you anything like if you don't have a certification you are useless you know but anyway we we'll have passed that level what were some difficulties you faced when you went abroad for the first time sincerely speaking i didn't face any difficulties when i went to the uk because number one my uncle was there um although he was in manchester and i was in bradford but he was close by he came to meet me in school like he was the one that helped my registration process and then i had Timmy, Tosin, Chioma like all of us that went to A levels together in Lagos they were all there um i even met some of the seniors like people that went the year before me so i met some of them so there was like a huge community and nigerian base there so it felt like home away from home yeah i miss my parents once in a while but it wasn't that bad i'm not gonna lie so unlike when i moved to paris ah doesn't i move to paris when i moved to paris was when i felt like i was coming to the abroad for the very first time because i felt so alone there was the language let's start with language language was an issue i did not know anybody to see nigeria and yeah was like looking for gold like i was seeing just Senegalese and cameroonians and they to speak french so it was like ah oh god like to tell you how it was when i my former uh, my photography school for the first year i was the only nigerian student in the whole year do you know what that means ah nigerians went there everywhere only me number one <laughs> anyway i digress what made you go into youtubing <sighs> what made me go into youtubing basically right when i was in the uk i had like i just said i had friends i had family i had people around um i could talk to people i could express myself and tell them things that i learned and encourage them share motivation in church i used to go to church wow in church i um used to read poems i used to moderate like you know we used to do bible study so everything that was in my head to an extent i could share with people and i came to france <laughs> I can't, who do i want to talk to i don't have anybody to share anything with so i said okay well, let me on camera and start talking um you know and it was also timely because i was learning about videography in school so i was like okay might as well kill two birds with one stone 
while I'm expressing myself and sharing I'm also developing my videography skills if you see my my or my beginning videos I used to be on the streets I'll be doing production for you people but yeah don't worry production is coming loading okay but yeah that's why I went into YouTube in what do you do when you're free slash your hobbies what do I do when I'm free if I'm not sleeping I'm reading a book if I'm not reading a book I am visiting um, galleries or museums I love looking at art I may not understand it but I just love seeing pretty things and just there is just something about seeing what another human being has created and it just makes you feel so in awe like oh my god this is the handwork of another person like what were they thinking what were they trying to pass along how do I feel versus what was the aim of the thing did they achieve the aim of their piece of art does it make me feel what they intended it intended it to make me feel how did they come up with the concept to create this thing like art is just beautiful i love being around art um but yeah those are my hobbies and talking to my family I can be on the phone with, i think that's why i don't have i don't go out actually because i'll be calling my parents and my brothers too much i need to block them what's your favorite book movie or tv show and why does it resonate with you my favorite book i don't know oh, it's actually scratch that i have a favorite book it's um heart talk by chloe Wade. and it's just i think first of all it's so artistic the book has so much it's artsy and it's something that made me feel loved I felt like it was the book was basically or the author was basically explaining how I felt at that time and it wasn't just a piece of oh these are this is how you can make your life a better type of book well it was not just an inspirational book it made me feel okay I'm not the only one that feels this way and she while saying you might feel this way she's also telling you how not to feel this way what to do and that book i really love is every word you cannot say i love it and hard talk by chloe those two books i really really love them there's just something about the poetic nature of the books that made me feel like they went into my heart and they were expressing how I felt and I could not like say just like the book said every word I cannot say but yeah those two books I really love them um movies I don't really like movies like that too I'm not even gonna lie I don't know why I don't watch movies but I watch tv shows I watch true crime tv shows um criminal minds NCIS, CSI, Cold Case, Mentalist. Oh my god, I love Mentalist. I've watched Mentalist like probably five, six times. How I Five O, you know, those kind of policy shows where they are catching criminals. Blah, blah, blah. Funny enough, I don't like the law version of those stuff. I don't like, I've never watched How to Get Away with Mother. I've never watched Suits. If you are talking about the law parts, I don't want it. I want to see the police parts again. Funny enough, when I'm watching like true crime documentaries on YouTube or whatnot, and then I'm calling my <laughs> my uncle, Uncle Larry, he's a lawyer, and I'm like, but Uncle Larry, explain this thing to me. And I'm stressing him out, and I'm sure he's just like, ah, this girl. There was one time I called him. <laughs> this man, this guy killed his, dude, this guy killed his sons, like his three children. He came home. Everything was fine. It was like, oh, let's go and have a nap. Told the wife, let's go and have a nap. The wife and three younger children went to have a nap. The woman had a daughter from previous marriage and she's a teenager. She didn't go to nap with them. The woman woke up to her husband shooting their children. And then when she was trying to fight him off, he shot her hand. And then he chased his children and shot them. Like little kids. I think the oldest one was probably like six or eight. Like, are you? And then after shooting them and making sure they are died, 
he drops the gun and sat down and was waiting for police and you know like and then wait let me not let me tell you part that now bust my head this man went to court he now had the other status plead not guilty <laughs> you shot them did you shoot them yes i shot them why did you do it uh, a lot has been going on with me mentally okay fair i'm not gonna say something's not wrong with you because clearly something is obviously wrong with you okay oh, so how do you plead not guilty but you confess saying that you do so why are you not guilty let's not even start anyway but yeah that's that's it it drives me up the wall so i called my uncle i'm like uncle larry um question can't all the lawyers say i don't want to defend this man like if they bring the case to you and say oh public defender oh, yeah see we are defending you know, killer of his children can you not say i don't want to do he said no why i don't want to do because if you come and meet me to defend you i'm going to make sure you end up in jail in fact i will tell the prosecutor please dear life sentence no actually and uh, what's in the that thing when they when they kill you legally death sentence yeah anyway let me leave it alone yeah the reason why <laughs> The reason why I watch a lot of true crime is because I'm just so fascinated by the psychology of people and it's just so crazy to me that you rather kill your wife or your husband than divorce. Sign paper to say I not do again no case closed. Oh yeah, worst case scenario will split property. You will see the children 50% of the time. Pay for the children, blah blah blah. Okay rest i hate you you hate me let's all rest do you know how many people you hate in life you now say no you don't want to do all of that you want to go and kill a person let's say you now successfully killed your husband or your wife you now come on television and be saying please guys i'm looking for my wife when they find your wife dead body you now say whoever did it please come forward you are a bastard ah you are a bastard no 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 it cannot be well with you dear do you think you, you think you can you can ah anyway <laughs> yeah that's why it resonates with me because it's just so interesting like are you okay you're yeah, not okay no need to ask if you're okay what's your go-to music genre and can you recommend a few of your favorite songs or artists um right now i really love christian music 99 percent of my songs or the songs on my playlist are christian music i love Nathaniel Obasi, Dunsin Oyeka, I hope that's how you pronounce his name. Um, a song that has been on repeat for me in the past three, four months is Love that song. Also love Sumisola. I just realized that it's like I'm really loving Yoruba songs but um, victoria orenzi yeah those those are songs i'll just keep inserting like different songs for you guys here i really love those songs they just make me feel so calm and in tune and it makes me feel like it quiets everything in my mind and i can focus so yeah however non christian songs that i love um love song by maria maria isabel and um walk song by jose uh thinking about love by wild rivers and rabel yeah those those and i love nf nf is the only rap artist that i listen to in this life because i can hear what he's saying you know i know what you're saying I can vibe with what he are saying and his songs are like poetry that makes sense and it's in tune with how i have felt or i'm feeling i love that guy if you were to give an advice to yourself 10 years ago what would it be and generally what advice will you give to the upcoming generation so 10 years ago me would be 15 yeah where was i i think yeah, I was just finishing secondary school. Wow. Ha ah, ha, it's been 10 years I finished secondary school. Jesus. Anyway, what is the question? Advice. Yeah. The advice I would give is 
learn about yourself focus on who you are as an individual we are in the way the society is right now it's very difficult to know what is your idea and what is something you saw on tiktok <laughs> it's very difficult to know if this is a goal you really have or if it's a goal that came to you based on what you saw others doing you know everyone wants to be an influencer everyone wants to be a millionaire everyone wants to be xyz and i'm not saying those things are bad all i'm saying is why why are you personally pursuing these goals what makes it important to you what is the you in it because if i open instagram and i've seen just on that picture of you there is no message to it there's no substance there is no you-ness to it you get so my advice would be know who you are understand yourself do not try to be a copy of anybody because there is only one you as cliche as that sounds it's only you there is no other person that can ever be you no one can do you better than you do you get so um yeah focus on yourself understand yourself because everything else in this world is fleeting you know um even in business or youtube people watch there are a million youtube channels right but you go back to watch specific channels and specific videos because of that person we can be 20,000 people talking about why this is why you should uh, be confident in yourself but you go back to one per particular person because you just love something about them they are stating the same thing that you've heard a million times but it is the way they state it and their personality that's what makes you go back so learn about yourself most important thing you can do for yourself in this life is to know who you are whose you are and why you are so yeah you know i got to end the video on a serious topic because we're serious children in this house anyway i hope uh you know a little bit about me and i wish you guys the very best do not forget you are loved you are beautiful you are scrumptious you are a delicious bowl of spicy jollof See you guys on Monday.